Hello, this is Professor Scott Norman in the Automatic Transmission Lab at Pittsburgh State University, and we are on our, I think it's our eighth video on uh, compressor identification and basic operation. And today we are talking about hybrid compressors. We know they're hybrid compressors because they got these big old monster orange wires on them, and we have more and more vehicles that uh, are hybrids or electric uh, vehicles in which they have a, a, a type of a hybrid compressor, AC compressor on there, and so we need to know just a little bit about them. Um, first of all, realizing that they have, you know, high voltage going to them. Um, they're operating off of the battery pack, could be as, as high as, you know, 300 plus volts in that battery pack. So, so the bottom line is, is that when you start messing with the compressors on these units, maybe they failed, the AC's not working anymore, you're the AC uh, technician for the dealership, um, you need to be trained on the hybrid system. And so, so obviously that's, that's uh, hybrid safety is extremely important. Uh, you know, uh, with that much voltage uh, going to it and you don't do the proper uh, safety procedures, uh, you know, you could die. And so, 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 so obviously we're starting out by um, making sure that you're pulling, you know, the, the battery cut off and back on the battery pack and making sure that you're taking and um, uh, removing the voltage from these uh, because again, that's, that's extremely important. So when I, when I take a look at these two um, compressors, um, there's really two big differences on it. Um, and if I take a look at this guy right here, I have two wires going to it. So I, so this guy right here is probably being hooked up to an inverter, but the bottom line is that it's, it's, um, it's going directly to the battery. The battery is uh, storing, let's say 300 volts DC, DC voltage. But this motor, both of these motors is a is three phase AC motor. And so I have to, so the problem is that I have to change my battery voltage, which is in direct current into alternating current. And so on this particular unit, I got DC voltage, positive, negative, going to this big old guy right here on top, which is the inverter. And the inverter is then gonna change from 300 volts DC to 300 volts AC, whatever is operating this particular electric motor. And so, and so this compressor, <laughs> number one, is big and heavy. Number two, it is extremely expensive because the inverter is on top of it. And so, very expensive. You know, you have um, some wires going to this. My guess is that, you know, you got yourself some CAN bus wires that uh, this module is communicating to other modules to determine um, at what speed I want to control this motor. So what's nice about um, uh, having electric motors uh, as a, um, as for your, um, for, your, um, for your AC system is I could turn that at any speed I want to. So they are variable displacement. So that's kind of fun. I could turn it solely. On a mild day, I could turn it very fast on a, um, on a on a very hot day. This compressor right here is a lot lighter. You know, it's a lot more smaller, probably a little bit less expensive. But the difference is, is that it has three wires going to it instead of two wires. And so, so this guy right here is hooked up to an inverter. So your 300 volt battery pack, those two wires are gonna go to an inverter and the inverter somewhere else on the vehicle is going to um, control the speed of the three-phase electric motor by oscillating the voltage on those three wires, and um, and and so the controller for this is somewhere else, and so so the deal is is that this makes uh, this style of compressor a lot smaller, easier to move around, but a lot less um, expensive. Now, what's unique about these compressors is that on both of them, the suction port. It's coming in at the back and the discharge port is going to be up front. So we're using the refrigerant to go through the electric motor. The electric motor on both of these are going to be in the back. You know, so the electric motor is here and the electric motor is here. And then in the front is where the compressor is. So the compressor is right there. I can see it right there. The compressor on this one is this, this section right here. So the discharge port is going to be on the front because that's where the refrigerant is coming out. So since we're using the, um, the refrigerant, you know, we're, we're bringing in a vapor cold refrigerant going through the um, going through the um, the electric motor, the three phase electric motor. Uh, uh, that electric, um, uh, the actual refrigerant itself, it's, it's not a problem. But the oil going through it, um, if it's regular PAG oil, PAG oil is considered conductive, and it could have a problem uh, as far as you know having a stray voltage. Uh, you're you're working on the AC system and you get electrocuted. So the key is, is that, is that we're using not PAG oil in these 
electric motors um, in these AC compressors, but we're using um, a POE oil, polyester oil, which is non-conductive. So that's something that always in the back of your mind, if you're dealing with a, a hybrid compressor, you know, that doesn't have a clutch on it. So, you know, you got rid of the clutch on it and, you know, you can mount it anywhere. It doesn't necessarily have to be on the engine. It, it, it typically is, but it could, it, you can mount it anywhere. Um, uh, it's still big and bulky, you know, it's still it's probably going to vibrate a little bit, so we don't want to put it under the dash where the owner can hear it. But but it is something that, that you have to be concerned about. Uh, when I take a look at these compressors, let's take a look at this one right here because I have this one taken apart. I got the, the front cover. I think I got one screw holding it still on. And again, this is the discharge port up here on top. So I got uh, a head, I'll call it a head is what I took off. And then I have a set of valves, or a set of valves, and so these are my exhaust valves on here. But if I take a look at that and see what's inside here, it is a scroll. Let's see if it'll come out. Now, obviously, if I took it apart, I got to make sure that I put it back together the right way, because if I misindex it, it's not going to work. But if I pull this apart ah, and do that, you can see that you have your scroll. And so, so electric compressors... Okay, hybrid compressors or a scroll compressor. So I could spin this scroll and it, again, it's not spinning it, it oscillates it. We did that in the other video. So we have our fixed scroll right here and we have our variable scroll that will oscillate, that will squeeze, squeeze, squeeze the refrigerant from the outside all the way to the inside. So if I put this together correctly and oscillate it, I can show you that when this thing moves, it does one of these things. I don't know if I'm spinning it the right way or not, but it's going to push it, the refrigerant from the outside to the inside. And that's what it does, is that it does one of these things right here. So the electric motor, which I can't really get to the electric motor, they make it where the electric motor is, um, it looks like it's in there pretty good, that I can't really get to it at all. Uh, but uh, the electric motor itself, uh, when it rotates and moves, it's going to move this uh, cam, which is going to, again, oscillate the, the movable scroll. And so that's just a basic coverage of the um, of the compressor. Uh, see if there's anything else on here. Oh, I do have a blow off valve right there, you know, on the head. So you know, if pressure gets above 500 pounds of pressure, it's going to allow the refrigerant to escape. So, so I have I have that there as a as a notable item on there. And that's all I see on it. So there you go. This is Scott Norman. We, if you're looking for more educational automotive videos, just take a look at my Professor Pintain YouTube channel. You can also follow me on, on Facebook. And I have a webpage. Just look for Professor Pintain. Thank you very much. You guys have a good day.